Taxi change to 120.8, report Romeo to the tower. Taxi. Hey there. All cleared ILS, runway 2, 4 left approach, you're uh, 8 miles from Romeo, maintain a 160 knots to Romeo. Okay, 260, the heading, uh, to intercept, clear for the approach to 160 to Romeo. 1 reduce speed to 160 knots. 160. East clock 0413, proceed towards the airport, watch your position. Just east of Barry, uh, 0413. Thank you, Keith. 160 Romeo, I'm cleared for the approach. The man you saw at the controls of that great airliner a moment ago, the man in this 27-year-old biplane, is professional pilot Myra Slovak. His life is flying, and flying is his life. To most people, flying is simply a means of travel. To Myra Slovak, flying is freedom. It's uh, his escape from the mundane, from the restrictions of Earth. In his exciting, sometimes dangerous life, flying has meant both personal and political freedom. Now, in a moment, we shall share with you the exciting life of Myra Slovak as we show you how he accepted the challenge to be free. That's free, all closed in, and he's got no place to do what he feels and say what he thinks. Lord, I'm looking, won't stop till I die. Gonna find some heaven here under your sky. Just lead me on to a rightful place where a man. Worth somebody feel Take the chance Freedom's like You can see That life's not worth living If you're not free From your place up in the sky it's not very hard to see the reason why Is it living to be all closed in What will make a bird trapped in a cage Happy again if not feeling the rush Of the wind on his face And the freedom to fly and to open space San Diego, California, 1967. 36-year-old world champion Myra Slovak comes out of retirement to race for his close friend, Bill Stead, who was injured earlier in the year. Myra Slovak, a fugitive from communism, has embraced America. And because of his daredevil courage, his consummate skills, and his innate showmanship, America has embraced him. His credits and accomplishments are endless, and everywhere he goes, he stands proud as the incredible story of his escape to freedom is relayed to audiences throughout America. Right now, Myra Slovak is sweating out the last minutes of preparation of the boat he is to drive at speeds better than 180 miles per hour. He's coming out of retirement today to drive Miss Chrysler for his friend Bill Stead. Bill, injured, has called for help. Myra, now an airline pilot, distrust the boat and after seeing seven drivers killed the year before has decided he's had enough. Every detail must be checked and double checked. Any malfunction on the part of the crew or the boat can mean death to the driver. The wind factor, the condition of the water, all must be anticipated if the driver is to successfully manipulate the treacherous turns one slip can mean sudden death to the driver and the boats around him. 
preparations made, Myra readies himself for the final race of his career. Win or lose, he will enter into permanent retirement from hydroplane racing. Green flag. The race is underway. Myra Slovak takes the lead, a position he has maintained throughout his exciting career. There are many people who have never met Myra Slovak who wonder at what drives him. What makes him an uncommon man? What makes him continually strive to set new personal goals and then risk all, including his life, to achieve them? The answer lies in the man himself. Who is he? What causes him to accept fear as a constant companion? Myra Slovak was born in Slovakia, the eastern part of Czechoslovakia, in 1930. The son of a grain merchant, Myra had the desire to fly as a young boy. At the age of 16 and a half, with two years of college, he joined the Czechoslovakian Air Force. After spending a year on gliders and two years as a cadet, Myra received his wings, graduating in the top 10 of his class. In February 1948, Myra is forced to join the Communist Party. In 1953, unable to endure life under the Communist rule, Myra decides to escape to West Germany by hijacking a DC-3 and flying it under the Communist radar screen. After spending a year in Germany, Myra comes to the United States, working here as a crop duster. Myra takes the job of driving the hydroplane Miss Wahoo, winning many races. In 1959, while driving Miss Bardahl, Myra becomes the national champion. In 1963, while driving Miss Exide, traveling at 165 miles per hour, the boat suddenly explodes, sending Myra 500 feet into the air. Near death, Floating face down in the water, Myra is rescued by Colonel Gardner, who entered the icy waters to hold Myra's head so that he could breathe. Losing 22 teeth with 160 stitches in his chin, Myra decides to retire from hydroplane racing. One year and one month later, Myra Slovak is in Reno, Nevada, at the controls of a brute of an airplane, a former Navy fighter, an F-8F called Miss Smirnoff. Myra's expert training as a crop duster and his skills as a hydroplane driver allows him an edge over the competitive field. And in 1964, Myra becomes the national champion of unlimited air racing. Now Myra sets a new goal the world speed record for propeller-driven aircraft. With a crew of enthusiastic volunteers, he begins reconstruction and improvement of a World War II P-39, equipping it with a hopped-up engine that might drive it more than 500 miles per hour. In the Wayfarers Club, ladies, from Aviation enthusiast George Menon picked up the bills, and Myra took the plane to Reno, where he joined the National Air Racers. Qualified on a technicality, he arrived four hours late. He had to content himself with high-speed demonstration flights. Mr. Menon is still waiting the big test. Accepting a challenge and hoping to break the world speed record, Myra returns to the world of hydroplane racing, driving Tahoe Miss. He wins the world championship for unlimited hydroplanes in 1966. In the summer of 1967, while reading Flying Magazine, Myra learns of a new small powered glider built in Germany. After checking further into the specifications for the plane, Myra decides to buy one and begins to plan his new objective, to fly this new light plane from Germany to Santa Paula, California. Many months are spent checking and double-checking the route, 
And finally, in April, Myra receives a telegram informing him his plane is ready. Taking two weeks vacation from the airlines, Myra flies to Schmittheim, Germany. Upon arrival, he discovers the plane has not yet been completed. The company informs Myra the aircraft will be ready to be shipped to the United States in a week. But Myra is insistent on flying the aircraft home. Myra's vacation is up and the plane is only half built. Myra gets them to put more workmen on the plane and takes a month's leave of absence from his job. He is determined to make the flight. More trouble. There's a storm front developing in the Atlantic. Three weeks late, the spirit of Santa Paula is rolled proudly from the hangar. The plane, equipped with extra gas tanks and a lightweight radio, will allow Myra to remain airborne for 13 hours before having to refuel. The little aircraft is gassed, and Myra prepares to take his first test flight. engine refuses to start. The company test pilot and the chief mechanic are baffled. This is the first plane in the history of their company which would not start on the first try. Finally, after double checking all their systems, they discover water in the carburetor. A simple draining and the plane is ready to go. One turn and Myra is set for his first test flight in the spirit of Santa Paula. One final check with the weather and uh, finishing the last minute preparations and Myra will be ready. One last detail, affixing the emblem of the United States. In a way, a declaration of appreciation. A proud salute and the little aircraft is ready for the long flight across the North Atlantic to its new home. Watched by curious onlookers, he taxis onto the field, ready for the takeoff. The months of waiting and planning are finally ended. The starting flare pushes the throttle forward. The sturdy little Volkswagen engine goes to work. The little Fournier RF4 airplane, which weighs only 400 pounds, is overloaded by 350 pounds. It struggles to gain speed and altitude. It's a heartbreakingly long takeoff run, but finally it lifts and remains airborne, and the trip has begun. Skimming low across the German countryside, over the broken concrete bunkers of World War II, where thousands lost their lives in the pursuit of freedom, across the rolling green countryside of Germany, through Belgium, over Dunkirk, across the English Channel to the cliffs of Dover. over the old anti-aircraft emplacements. On up the Dover coast towards Scotland with gathering clouds.
suddenly, rain. Forced to land in Glasgow, Myra is grounded for five days due to the weather. Now four weeks behind schedule, and the roughest part of the trip ahead, Myra begins to think it over. He has no sponsor, no one behind him, nothing but his pride. He can swallow that. Giving himself a deadline, Myra is about to quit and ship the plane back by boat when he receives a telegram from three young boys at Santa Paula, California. The telegram reads, We love the spirit of Santa Paula. We love you, Myra Slovak. Myra decides, rain or shine, he will leave. The next morning, the sun breaks through. With a prayer of thanks for the sunshine, Myra heads out over the Atlantic for the Faroe Islands, the first leg of his overwater journey. An avowed pessimist, he expects things to go wrong and is ready for the problems he may face. Myra's first problem is short in coming. Facing a strong headwind, his overwater speed is dropped to 50 miles an hour. He's consuming more fuel than he had anticipated. Dropping down close to the sea, Myra flies on a cushion of air known to pilots as the ground effect. This permits him to cut back on his fuel consumption. Approaching Iceland, Myra is forced to increase his altitude because of the high, mountainous terrain. Two hours behind schedule and using more fuel than he had allotted, Myra searches for a radio beacon from Kulasuk, Greenland. There is no signal. A 700 uh, zero, zero declaring Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. In that cold water below, Myra can survive for two hours if he's forced to land. He puts out another distress signal. A glider, November 1, 7, 0, Suddenly, 0, declaring Mayday, Mayday, his radio call Mayday. is answered. Glider An Icelandic November airliner picks up Myra's signal Mayday. and informs him of his position. I hear you loud. Uh, with neighbor to receive my ADF, requesting a uh, position from Kulusa radar. Glider, November 1, 7, 0, 0. Your radar fix is 6, 5 degrees, 2, 0 minutes north, 3, 4 degrees, 3, 0 minutes west. You're heading to Kulosu. It's 320 degrees. Roger. My heading to Kulosu radar is uh, 320. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck to you, sir. And five minutes later, to his surprise, he spots Kulosu, Greenland. There's a long ways to go, but suddenly it all looks downhill. For after Reykjavik and Kulosu and Sondestrom, he sees the mainland of North America beneath his fragile wings. And as he crosses into New England and the United States, Myra exuberantly does a victory loop. And a roll in celebration. across the United States and straight to Santa Paula, California.
It's a long way from Germany and Iceland and Greenland. Myra flies low over the golden hills of California's west coast. by a fellow pilot in a vintage Curtis Robin, Myra nears journey's end. The airport of Santa Paula is in sight. The excitement heightens as Myra thinks of all the pain and the frustration he's gone through to achieve this one golden moment. The 12,000 miles he has flown, the towering icy mountains of Greenland, the cold sea below, the vast continent he has crossed, He's done it in such a short while. And in a moment, he'll be on the ground. For his friends waiting below, he flies a low pass over the field. Suddenly, an unexpected downdraft. is caught. Then tragedy, the nightmare of all pilots, doomed by the tiny error of miscalculation. Twelve thousand miles over half the world, over the Atlantic, the Greenland ice cap, through snow and rain and fog, to end like this. It will take Myra one full year to recover. His injuries will prohibit him from ever racing again, but will not destroy his spirit. Myra Slovak, once again, has looked death in the face and lived. But why? What makes Myra Slovak do this? It is his creed. I do not choose to be a common man. It is my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dulled by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk, to dream and to build, to fail and succeed. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will not trade freedom for beneficence nor my dignity for a handout. I will never cower before any master nor bend to any threat. It is my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, to think and act for myself, enjoy the benefit of my creations, and to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. Such a long way on the run, left behind what you could not stand to take up a life in a strange foreign land. Now your heart has a sadness to bear. How you long to tell everyone everywhere what they've done to your country and what they've done to you that it may never happen in this great country too freedom fly 
light today into the hearts of all we pray. Give us the strength and the courage to to fight for the right and do what you do. Let us never forget who we are. Let us always remember to reach for that star. Love, hope that will carry us long way from the dark to the dawn of awakening now. Thank you. 
Cutting that uh, buoy tight out of the north corner. Moving down to the end of lap number four in first place. Wahoo, the boat owned by Bill Boyne Jr., 500 feet away from the finish line of his fourth lap in first place. End of the lap for Wahoo, the leader in each one A. The second flag is coming up for the lead boat. Miss Wahoo, she comes down to the 1,000 foot mark. She's 500 feet away from a win in Heat 1A. Your lead boat, Wahoo, driven by Mira Slovak, the winner of Heat 1A. Here comes the Miss Wahoo, she's all by herself. The Bardot is coming real hard in the outside corner. Here comes Miss Seattle. It's Wahoo, Bardot, Miss Seattle. Rocket is last. And Gale 5 is fourth. Now let's see how they go to the south turn. Into the south turn, it was Wahoo on the inside corner planning his start beautifully, getting off right on the money. He is into the corner first. Now let's see if he comes out of the corner first. The first of 10 times around the course. 30 miles, heat 1A. On the inside corner, we have the um, Bardal. Bardal is first, and the Wahoo is second. It is Bardal coming out of the south corner now, and it is uh, Wahoo on the inside corner, and coming up real hard in uh, third place is the Gale Five. Now the Miss Seattle has come up and taken over in third place. Wahoo makes a bit now, draws up dead even with her on the outside corner. We'll clock them as they go down in a nose for nose. Bardal running hard on that inside corner. And Wahoo starts to move out in front. Mira Slovak on the third lap makes his move. He moves into first place on the outside. Now let's see if he can cut over. He must give uh, a rooster tail room to the Bardal. And the Bardal stays tight on that inside corner. Norm has an advantage there if he can hold to it. Bardal 128. Up that back stretch. Here comes Mira Slovak cutting hard now in this third time around the course. Heat 1A, four boats are left. 
as the uh, third place boat starts to come up the back stretch. That's Gale Five. And in fourth place, just running out of the south corner is the Miss Rocket. It is Wahoo coming out of the turn now as Norm Evans almost tipped over. It's Wahoo taking over in first place at the end of lap three at the 1,000 foot mark. Wahoo in first place, Bardall in second. Wahoo leading, Miss Bardall second. And Wahoo is now in first place, Bardall is second, two seconds behind. So the two boats have changed position and Wahoo moves away from him like he was pinned to a post as he approaches the south corner past the deceleration point, moving in on buoy number one. Your lead boat going into the north turn. She has lapped Gale 5. She has lapped Miss Rocket. The, uh, Gale 5 is in third place, and Rocket is in fourth place in heat 1A. The checkered flag is coming up for the lead boat. Miss Wahoo, she comes down to the 1,000-foot mark. She's 500 feet away from a win in heat 1A. Your lead boat, Wahoo, driven by Mira Slovak, the winner of heat 1A. So back to home base for Mira Slovak as he makes his first turn out here of the afternoon, a winning one. Well, I say that the pattern has stayed just about the same that a lot of the so-called experts anticipated that this heat section 1A would go. And that would be Mira Slovak in Wahoo. A lot of feeling about Mira Slovak down here. He's the young man whom some of you know, I'm sure, but perhaps others don't, who flew a communist plane out of Czechoslovakia with some 20 plus people on board and made his escape to freedom in the West. Mira has certainly become not only a, a part of seafare and hydroplanes, but a part of an American heritage too. Anyone as fine and outstanding a fellow as Mira is one whom you also like to see win. Now, live and direct through the facilities of WAML-TV, the 1959 President's Cup hydroplane race from the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. Brought to you by the makers of Mission Macaroni products and Riceroni. You can always be sure of chef's quality macaroni when you reach for Mission. We take you now direct to Washington, D.C. and the WMAL-TV special events crew. Point here on the Potomac River and welcoming you to the 28th annual running of the President's Cup Regatta. And of course, power boats galore and the main interest, the race coming up in just about nine minutes, that is the unlimited hydroplanes. It's a beautiful day here in Washington, D.C. The sun is shining brightly. The temperature just about 70 degrees. There is a pretty good breeze blowing up from the river, blowing upriver from the south. Uh, the wind coming about out of the southeast at about 12 to 15 miles an hour. And of course, this wind very definitely will have a bearing on the running of this race today and the handling of the boats. The race, of course, a total of 45 miles. We had the first two heats yesterday, each heat being a 15 miles duration apiece, five times around this three mile course. The boat that is number one in points is Miss US-1 with 800 points, owned by George Simon of Detroit, driven by Don Wilson of Detroit. The number two boat, Wahoo, with 700 points, owned by Bill Boeing, Jr. of Seattle, driven by Myro Slovak, of course, uh, the Czechoslovakian, and now registered out of Seattle. Now the boats again down at the far turn, there is the warning gun, giving them one minute before the start of the race, and they'll be cruising down, as you can watch the clock ticking off the seconds, that's the big clock that the boys in the boats will be looking at themselves, and they'll be coming down for the flying start for the finals now of the President's Cup Regatta. Bill, this is a very important part of the race right here, is it not getting that uh, over the finish line? That's over the starting, starting line, line, about half the race, I believe. The boat, the fast boat gets over early. He's just awfully hard to pass, awfully hard. I don't know whether the Bardal, uh, they won the flip, of course, with the Hawaii Kai to see if they were the alternate boat in the event that one of the six did not start. I believe, though, all original six are out there, so the Bardal will still be at the beach. I think so. I was watching them as they uh, came by, and I saw all boats that uh Looks uh, like a pretty good start coming. Yep, they're all coming. I don't know what the time is, but... And they're really starting to pour it on now, kicking up those rooster tails. Let's see how they come across this the starting line. This is Chuck uh, Thompson there on the inside. Here comes the U.S. with a beautiful start on the U.S. The U.S., of course, is ahead with Miro Slovak uh, right behind him. And it looks like Miro Slovak in the Wahoo is overhauling the U.S. Chuck Thompson on the inside has been left behind there. 
They're really having trouble down in that turn. The water's very choppy. I can see on our monitor here as they are really bouncing those Bonsons from side to side. Unofficially, uh, whichever boat wins between the U.S. and Oahu will win the race, even though we're going to a time uh, uh, time deal. Uh, the way it works out is the Oahu has better time and uh, will probably win the race if she wins, or if the U.S. wins, then she'll have it on points. On points. Here comes Miss Here comes the race for first Now, look right at now. Oahu uh, overhauling the U.S., going very fast. They're both probably going close to 170 miles an hour, and the Wahoo is passing the U.S. And the U.S. is on the inside, a very bad spot to be when you're going into that turn, because he may have to go through the Wahoo's rooster tail there. The U.S. spun out in the turn slightly. The U.S. spun out, now it's picking up again. He hooked on a wave. The Wahoo now is way ahead, but when the U.S. hooked in that turn inside the Wahoo, it slowed him down considerably. Of course, he's lucky he wasn't upside down like that was. I think Bob Pickett just mentioned the fact that the Wahoo set the uh, new course record yesterday right. in addition to the uh, the lap record. That That's is the race true. I, I think that all the records are being broke in this race and uh, considerably, not by just a small fraction of a mile an hour. They're being well broken uh, several miles an hour. So it's Miss, Miss U.S. went through second. This is Miss Detroit coming through third. And we'll get the fourth, fifth, and sixth boats as they come through. Our cameras are now following the leader, who is going down the back stretch. Boy, that uh, Myra Slovak is really pouring it through, isn't he? That's right, and Merrill would rather win this race, I believe, than any other race in the country. He's a Czech refugee. Uh, he was brought into the country by a special bill. Uh, the president signed this bill and also made it possible for Miro as an alien to fly airplanes commercially. He currently works for Continental Airlines. And uh, this race means an awful lot to Miro. Uh, he's a very popular person in the racing business. Everyone likes Miro, and uh, it's uh, real nice if he wins this for him, I know. The U.S. took a terrible bounce down there. We do have some word, unofficially, but I think we'll just ignore that word until we get something more definite as to the condition of Don Wilson in Miss U.S. 1, who was thrown out of his uh, boat as he went uh, through that upriver up turn. It looks like, the uh, to get back to the actual finish of the race itself, it looks like Wahoo, uh, with Myra Slovak, he uh, set out to accomplish what he did set out to do. It looks like he has won the race. And, of course, Miss U.S. 1, who was pressing all the way, uh, was eliminated on that last lap when uh, Don Wilson left the cockpit in that far turn. And incidentally, that cruiser coming up on your screen right now is the Queen's Cruiser. And the uh, Queen of this President's Cup Regatta, Miss Nancy Priest, the daughter of the Treasurer of the United States, is aboard. And she'll be coming up here to uh, congratulate the winner, again unofficially at this time, Myra Slovic. And so from Haynes Point in Washington, D.C., this is the 1959 President's Cup Regatta. The bright emotional spot of the 59 season occurred at the President's Cup race on the Potomac. The race was won by Mira Slovak in Bill Boeing's Miss Wahoo, named incidentally after Wahoo, Nebraska, the hometown of Boeing's wife. Slovak has been a popular favorite wherever he's raced and was the subject of a This Is Your Life show originated through King facilities. Miro had not won too many races, but that 59 President's Cup was the one he wanted most. This was the one which gave him the opportunity to shake hands with President Eisenhower to say thanks for his new life in America. Through the turn they go. You see on the outside, uh, Muncie is in Thriftway and Wahoo is on the inside this time, having come through his wake. Let's see if uh, he can possibly make a challenge. It's still Miss Thriftway on the outside leading. And Wahoo coming in good shape and making a challenge. Mira Slovak does not want to finish second to Bill Muncy. Let's see if they can take him. This is a real boat race now on the back stretch. Look at him go in the chute. Now let's see if Muncy can possibly cut him off on the turn. They're close. The lighter colored boat is Thriftway with Bill Muncy. The darker colored boat is Wahoo with Mira Slovak. And it's a rough ride through that turn for Wahoo and Muncy is going to gain ground on the turn, it appears from here. But Wahoo came across the wake and is coming on the inside now. Let's see what's happening. Oh, and they're going to come close, and Wahoo cut in front of Muncie. Oh, he cut in front of him, and now he's on the outside, and Wahoo has taken the lead. And Thriftway has eaten water and may go dead. It is dying, and here comes Wahoo across the finish line, leading after lap two. 
And I imagine Mr. Muncy has quite some thoughts to himself right now, but he's got her going again. Muncy is 11 seconds behind now, and there goes Smith Ripway trying to pursue Mira Slovak. Looking at the lead boat, Miss Seattle 2, going back through the field, the second place boat is, it's Wahoo with Mira Slovak, can barely see another boat through the spray, and I can't even develop it, uh, see it now, it's Miss Spokane, the lilac lady, and running fourth is Breathless, and running far behind is Colroy, and now there's been a, uh, one of the boats has had something happen to it, which one is it? And the race is being stopped, the race is being stopped by the players. It's Wahoo with Mira Slovak who's in the drink. He has been thrown into the water and the race is being stopped before the completion of the first lap. And the red uh, smoke flares are up. The, uh, the red smoke flares are in action. Now well, let's get down on the course. And there are the other boats uh, nearby to lend assistance and the Coast Guard craft are coming up, other patrol boats. We've had a mishap uh, three quarters of the way through lap one of Heat 1B. In Heat 1B, the boats had almost completed the first lap and were coming out of the final turn when Miss Wahoo, running in second position to Miss Seattle 2, suddenly flipped, throwing Mira Slovak, her driver, into the water. Latest reports from Virginia Mason Hospital indicate that Slovak is in satisfactory condition, suffering from internal injuries, the extent of which are as yet not definitely known. <laughs> 